Hi there and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to show you a mixed media art tutorial on 140 pound mixed media paper. These are all the jelly papers that I've made, jelly prints over time. I collect quite a few of them, but they're fun to use in my mixed media pieces. So I'm just starting with some fluid satin medium to get the papers down. I generally try to pick a few different jelly prints and not get too busy because I know I'm going to cover them up to some extent. So these are just some of the ones that I picked out. I do make all of these with my jelly plate. I'll put a link to another video up here just to show you how I do it. I use a lot of stencils and a lot of different bright colors that I just really enjoy looking at. And I think that's one of the things that's important to remember when you're making any kind of collage papers or things that you're going to use in your artwork is to create the things that you love because if you love them i'm sure other people will like them as well and it's also more fun to use supplies that you really like so i'm just kind of picking up papers i rip them into random shapes and then just put them down not really worrying about how great everything looks together because my next step in the process usually is to put a layer of acrylic paint down over the papers. So I'm just having fun kind of playing with the medium and putting the papers down in a way that may go together, may not, but just getting that first layer down is part of the play process. And I usually try not to use too many colors or too many bright colors that I know won't go together later because I tend to use a similar palette of the papers that I do of the paint. So I want to make sure I'm not setting myself up for a big puzzle to try to figure out later. So I just put some weights down on the corners and let it dry for a little while before starting with the paint because a lot of times the paper can curl up. So I just try to give it time to dry before putting on a layer of paint. So this is light olive green with raw umber, just a little bit of raw umber to make it a little less kind of neon color. It's almost like an army green. It may look different on the screen, but it's, it's a really lovely color. I love using this color a lot. And I'm just kind of splashing it around, giving some drips in there to create different lines and different shapes on the paper. So this is kind of the first layer of paint. And again, I'm not too worried about how it looks or what it's going to turn out as because there's a lot of layers that happen and I just try not to get in my own way. This next color that I'm using is um, bright turquoise green again with a little raw umber such a useful color I just find that it kind of tones some colors down to make it a little more earthy I just like that kind of overall vibe so I'm applying it with a palette knife and I really love how that turns out although it's not very specific and some people get a little nervous about using a palette knife kind of like a paintbrush but I like the erratic shapes that it makes and then I just go in with a, this is a watercolor brush and just kind of adding in some softer shapes and blending it a little bit just so it's not quite so sharp and sitting on top of the page. I'm not really thinking too much about what I'm doing, just kind of enjoying the process and adding some color. So again, just giving that a second to dry. I know I add a lot of different layers, so I try to kind of um, remember that you don't want to do it all at once because then it becomes a big wet mess. So the next kind of step that I like to do is add some more papers on top, trying to bring together the colors and maybe the shapes and just kind of having fun with starting to bring it together with 
a basic composition and just seeing how it's all working together. So that color of that um, jelly print that I just put down is like a deep turquoise that I added. I think I added a little Payne's gray to it to make it a little deeper. And I'm using that same color on this other jelly print of the X's and just kind of putting it up in the corner there just to create a little more interest because it was getting a little lobby up there, for lack of a better word. So I wanted to add some marks. And sometimes my favorite way to add marks is to use my jelly prints because I print it a lot on the deli paper, as you can see here, and it just adds like a nice sheer layer. So I try to use like a lot of the colors that appeal to me, pinks, turquoise, deep blues, and it's easy to blend them into my mixed media projects. So you can kind of see how they add just a little interest. Those three dots at the bottom, that's a jelly print. And then this little line of dots is another jelly print. So it's fun to experiment, and it's also a great way to see how something's going to come out before I actually make the commitment to it. I like having that option. So this is fluorescent pink, and I combined it with a little bit of the light gold and a little bit of cadmium orange hue. So it kind of made like a salmon color. And that is bringing the eye down to the pink on the bottom as well so it's bringing the two colors together more cohesively in the piece so just adding some drips and interest they're kind of following the same lines as the other drips and again letting that dry a little bit so it doesn't become a little bit of a mess and just adding a little more pink throughout the piece at this part of the process, I like to add marks and just kind of try to bring it together with different feelings and visuals. So here's some more circles. That is a jelly print as well. I put that on regular paper. And then here is my focal point. I found this shell and I just really loved it. So I printed it out on deli paper and I did do a clear coat on it of something called rustoleum satin clear painter's touch and it definitely helped with making sure it didn't totally bleed when i put some um, satin medium on top because a lot of times when it's printed on that deli paper that's kind of a wax paper so it doesn't completely dry especially when adding some kind of moisture to it so you have to be careful if you are using that just to kind of be ginger when you're putting some moisture on it. Do it and let it go. Don't fuss around with it or else it will bleed. So here I'm just using a white gel pen to kind of create some marks and interest. I love the little details um, that you can create on any mixed media painting. It's just a lot of fun and I feel like it's a great way to finish. So this part, I wanted to just kind of draw attention to the centerpiece while also helping it blend in a little more. So I'm drawing this on a piece of deli paper and I'm using just a Sharpie permanent marker. It's thin, um, a thin tip. And I did kind of get stuck on a few of the circles when I was making them. So I just redid it on the other side and just cut it out. I don't want to put the whole thing on top of it, so I just cut out the actual circle. And you can kind of see there the finished circle. The trick to gluing down something like this is to put it down and then glue in parts and don't pull it because it because it's a circle, it does get a little wonky, so you want to just pick it up and let it gently fall down and it'll be the right Kind of shape in the end and i do put satin medium on top of everything because i know i make a lot of layers and that kind of gives a little protectant 
So here is the finished product. You can see all the different little details. This one was a lot of fun to make and kind of on theme for the summertime, which I'm in right now. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you so much for following along. And if you enjoyed this one, here are a few more videos just like it. I hope to see you again soon.